Hello, everyone. I'm Marcel Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Eric Sean. Welcome, as always. Joining us, Dr. Mark Siegel, professor of medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center and also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. And Dr. David Samadhi, chairman and professor of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and chief of robotic surgery. Good to see you. Good to see you. As always, Very we're going to start good. this morning with something that affects a lot of people in our country. About 70 million Americans, and that is hypertension. But it turns out only about half the people who have it know that it's, they have it or, or that it's even under control. So, Dr. Siegel, I mean, it's a big topic. You see it a lot in your office. How do you know if you suffer from hypertension, and what does that mean? First of all, we call it the silent killer, Eric, and there's a reason for that, because 360,000 deaths a year are related to high blood pressure. Not necessarily that alone, but the heart disease it causes, the strokes it causes, the kidney failure it causes, all of these things are connected. And then there's a category called prehypertension, which I'm monitoring all the time. People that have a blood pressure better, higher than 120 over 80, but I'm not yet ready to intervene. 120 over 80 is the gold standard. Okay. Below 120 over 80 is normal. Any number below that, we've just reinvestigated that recently. That's the number. But here's the, here's the issue. People come to see me all the time with high blood pressure. First thing I want to say, first tip is the doctor should be checking it. Nurses check it all over the place, but if I'm going to intervene, I want to be the one checking it. Also, David is going to say, I've got to check it more than once. I've got to check it on different occasions. There's also white coat syndrome. Yes. I could be causing your blood pressure to go up by making you anxious. I've got to take that into consideration. I've also, I also want you to do lifestyle changes before I consider medication. Salt. Lower salt. Exercise. Or water. Exercise. We talk about it all the time. Or water. Or, or uh, water. Uh, less, uh, less hot dog. And David, <laughs> what, if, you, what if, you're, if you're 120 over 80? What if you're higher than 120 yeah, over 80? Because that's a great question because I wanted to ask how important are the numbers? Because what if, say, you have a pressure of blood pressure of 120 over 87? That may be okay for you to operate and for your body. How much do those, those numbers matter? Well, those numbers absolutely matter, but there are many different factors that can lead to that, uh, especially depending on the size of your body, depending on your cardiac output, the volume of blood that you're pumping in. That's the systolic, the top number, and the diastolic, which is the lower number. We want it to be around 120 over 80. Once you get close to 140 over 90, that's you're getting into the hypertensive zone. Mm -hmm. Over 160, over 100, you're in deep trouble. You've got to see this. But going back to what Eric was saying is that this is a silent killer. A lot of people may have this. One out of five Americans have high blood pressure. They may not even know about this. So you don't always come with severe headache, nose bleeding, chest dizziness. pain, shortness of breath, and dizziness. So right now, you, should, you may have it and not know it. Why is it important to know your blood pressure? Because it's a systemic problem. It can cause stroke. It can cause heart disease, coronary artery disease, kidney disease. And we see this as urologists all the time. And it causes atherosclerosis. Here is the What's reason. That? It's a placking of the vessels and vascular disease. And it's that, the only way to find it is, is to take your blood pressure? Number one, you have to take three times. One blood pressure is, doesn't mean that you have blood pressure. You have to take it three separate times. It has to be the right size cough that goes over your arm, and it has to be done in different occasions. The reason why it's important to know this is by reducing your blood pressure by about five millimeter of mercury, you reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke close to 30 percent. One other thing I want to mention before I pass it on to Mark is that there are different types of high blood pressure. One is essential high blood pressure or primary, which is as a result of aging, eating too much salt, not being, over, not being active, weight gain, etc. But the secondary uh, high blood pressure, which is important, is you may have adrenal cancer. You may have a tumor in your adrenal. You may have thyroid disease. You may be taking uh, too much alcohol or smoking or cocaine. Medication sometimes can do this. So you really want to talk to your doctor and find out what's going on. But Dr. Mark, so many people try those pressure cuffs at home. One, do those work? And then also, what if you have chronic uh, blood pressure problems where you may have prescribed medication in partic particular dosage, you know, and for six months you're okay, and then suddenly eight months later, that's no longer working? Continuous monitoring. First, to your first excellent question, Arthel, th these things at home are variable. So I say, if you have it at home and you're checking it at home, which I'm not against, bring it into your doctor's office, let your doctor compare it to what they're doing in the office. Mm. The second thing is I want to differentiate between the two types of blood pressure. There's the upper number, systolic, and there's the lower number, diastolic. The upper number is when the arteries are pumping blood out. That's the stream of blood that goes into the arteries. The lower number is after that's over, your arteries are expanding. And when they start to come back, that gives you the lower number. 
both of them need to be treated. As we get older, Arthel, the upper number becomes more of a problem. The lower number is more of a problem as we're younger. But we don't want to see numbers over 80, 85, 90 for the lower number. Upper number, we don't want to see one beyond 120, because, 130, 140, because, because this is what leads to stroke, to heart attack, and to kidney disease. Now, when I go to treat these things, you've started to hint at that. If the treatment I'm giving doesn't work, I may combine it. We use drugs called afterload reducers, which take the pressure off the heart. And then water pills actually work really well, diuretics. And they work very well together with the, with the afterload reducers. So first you may give an afterload reducer, something called an ACE inhibitor, something like Altase, something like Ramipril, something like Zestril, or something like Diavan. These are the certain names. Because the you, water gets rid of the fluid that builds up. And then you add a water pill, like hydrochlorothiazide, that the gets rid of the fluid. At lower but, volumes, your blood pressure is I, easier to control. There's no question that Mark deals with this all the time, and he knows a lot about medications. And I think there are going to be patients that after they felt everything that we've done, they should go on these medications. But right. I also want them to be aware of a lot of things that you can do. Lifestyle changes. I want you to read about them. We just posted something on my blog about DASH diet. Dietary approach to stop high blood pressure. This is when you approach to eating a lot of whole grain, fruits and vegetables. Your sodium level should be about somewhere between 1500 milligram a day so low sodium what is which that? is like two, the that's about the one or two, yes one so don't salt your food don't add any salt you get nothing in the chips it. knock off the chips knock off the process the food. process the Eric. white bread and start exercise yes. start exercise walking and exercising you need exercise to, will help you lower yeah, blood pressure you need to key. you need to exercise you need to lose weight you need to make sure that you stay away from a high fat diet and finally find a way to manage stress this is another thing that we haven't talked a lot yeah how there's do you know that, that there's a lot of <laughs> relaxation and biofeedback that you can do and find out how you can do this read about dash right, diet i think right, before that coq enzyme coq10 taking l arginine if you're interested these are all vasodilators if all fails that's when I think we should go to the By the way, way, sure. way, they show two kinds of exercise there. I want to tell you, the ones where you're lifting weights, that does not help with your blood pressure. It's when on, you're on the treadmill or the elliptical or the bike, that's what lowers your All blood right, pressure. Bottom line, you've got to know what your blood pressure is, number one. Get okay. yourself a good-looking trainer, and that can lower your blood pressure also. <laughs> or raise it. You yeah, raise that's it. also a basic diet that lowers your blood pressure. Okay, this is where I wrangle the boys in, and we move on. Very good information. Thank you.